You designed your website or landing page and you are happy with it. But visitors are not converting. They are not placing orders with your website, not subscribing to your newsletter, they are not download downloading your ebooks, and not joining your membership sites. In this video, we will talk about A B testing. Stay tuned. In this video, we will discuss four different topics. First, what is A B testing? Second, how does A B testing software determine a winning design or variation? Third, assigning weighted traffic to different variations in an A-B test. And number four, how many visitors should you include in an A-B test? So we are gonna go and run through these topics very quickly, so make sure that you pay close attention. What is A-B testing? If visitors are not converting on your website, then obviously there is something wrong that is stopping them. You can go ahead and ask your design team to create new designs, but the question remains, how do you know that the new designs will convert more visitors compared to the original design? Well, that is where A-B testing comes in handy. A-B testing, sometimes referred to as split testing, is the process of testing multiple variations of a web page against the original design of that page, with the goal of determining which page generates more conversions. The original design of a page is usually referred to as the control. The new variations of the page are usually referred to, those new variations are referred to as variations or challengers. The process of testing which page generates more conversions is typically referred to as a test or an experiment. Let's take an example. The home page on an e-commerce website receives 100,000 visitors a month. To determine if there is a way to increase conversions, the design team creates new design for the page. Testing software is then used to split the homepage visitors between the control and the new challenger. So 50,000 visitors are directed to the control and 50,000 visitors are directed to the challenger. The A-B testing software will track the number of conversions each design generates to determine which design is the winner. Let's take a second example. A blog main homepage receives 3,000 visitors a month. The primary conversion goal for the page is to get a visitor to subscribe to the email list of that blog. The designer or the design team creates a new design for the blog homepage which highlights the subscription box. Testing software is then used to send 1,500 visitors to the original design, the control, and the testing software also sent 1,500 visitors to the new design, the challenger. Testing software tracks the number of subscribers each design generates. How does the testing software determine the winning design? At its core, A-B testing software tracks the number of visitors coming to each page in an experiment and the number of conversions each design generates. Now, sophisticated A-B testing software tracks much more data for each variation. As an example, in our Pi testing software, we track the number of conversions, page views, visitors, bounce rate, exit rate, revenue, the source of traffic, the medium of traffic. Now, the testing software uses two factors to determine a winning design. First, the conversion rate for each design. This number is determined by dividing the number of conversions for a page by the number of unique visitors for that page. Number two, the confidence level for each design. Confidence level is a statistical term indicating the certainty that if the same experiment is conducted across many separate data sets in a different experiment, the percentage of the test that will produce the same result will remain consistent. So if a challenger produces a 20% increase in conversions with a 95% confidence, then repeating the same test or experiment will get the same result in 95% of the times. Assigning weighted traffic to different variations. Most testing software automatically divides visitors equally between different variations. There are, however, instances where you need to assign different weights to different variations. For example, in an experiment that has an original design and two challengers, you might want to assign 50% of the traffic or the visitors to the original design and split the remaining 50% of the visitors between variations one and two. How many variations should you include in a test? There is no correct answer to this question. 
The more variations you introduce in a test, the longer it will take to complete. This, of course, depends on the number of visitors that go through a particular test and the number of conversions each variation generates. What's important is to remember that if you want to introduce new challengers, you want to think about the process that you are using to create those challengers. Yes, some of these challengers might increase conversion rates. However, uh, without understanding the logic that persuaded visitors to convert, you will not be able to duplicate or replicate that in other experiments. Now, keep the following rules in mind. If you have less than 150 conversions a month, your website might not be ready for A-B testing. Focus on driving more visitors to your website through either SEO, social media, or paid traffic. If you have more than 150 conversions per month, but less than 1,000 conversions, then you want to create four to five challengers against the original. If you have more, th more than 1,000 conversions per month, then create seven to 10 challengers against the original. There you go. Now you know more about A-B testing. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. And also please share this video with your friends or colleagues. Until then, happy testing.